Hi guys, welcome back to episode 2 of our campaign in Darwinian in Divide and Conquer. Yes, and last time we took Alarnin and Carvrad maybe took a little bit longer than we were maybe expecting, but that's fine. Um, and you can see why we did that, why it took a little bit longer, because you can just see how brutal siege battles are. Uh, when we took out Carverad there, when we uh, sieged down the city. And we're just going to move them into the docks. Uh, and they're ready to go in case we need to bring troops down here quickly. See, he is a diplomat. I want to just have, go have a look at um, Mistrand. They do have quite a few troops in there. Some nice ones as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep on, uh, keep on having a look around. I kind of want to find all the uh, settlements of... Um, of the Easterlings. In terms of Toggle Fog of Wars, guys, I'm thinking we might do one at turn 20, uh, just so we can see how everyone else is doing on the map. And then after that, we'll take we'll do one if we take after we've taken Mistrand, after we've taken another settlement's capital. Um, so cool. When we are here, we are sieging down Mornithel. And I'm really hoping that they don't think this army's too strong for them to take. I'm hoping they think that they can sally out and beat us. Because that is the way we're going to win that battle. I am not going to siege it down. You know, we're going to have to just keep taking troops out until they think they're strong enough to beat us. Um, <laughs> which will be fun. But anyway, uh, let's see uh, what we want to do. I don't think we want to do anything else. I think we're good. So let's click the end turn and let's pray that the rebels come out and attack us. Now, in terms of this video, I think this video should have come out about an hour after the first video, guys. So if you get that, if you wanted to, um, you know, binge it, it's definitely there for you, which should be good. I don't know. Are they trying to bribe us? That's a bit embarrassing, bro. Don't try and bribe Strondos. That's not what you want. Get away, Rune. <laughs> they don't want the military means of conquest anymore. Okay, so they didn't think they were strong enough. So what I'm thinking, we'll take you out because you're weak. And we'll take you out because you're not going to be useful either. And that really should be enough. Eight, you know, eight units versus their 12. They should really think they're stronger than that. So I'm hoping they will attack. In terms of where we're building, we're not building Carverad. We're not building Strondos. That's where we wanted to build. So let's build that Mason's Hall in there as well. Over time, it'll just make a... Uh, you know, it'll just make everything cheaper. So let's uh, smash that end turn again. And let's see what's going on. We're having a look down here. I know they've got that big settlement down there that they start with. Do they start with it? Uh, oh, they do. The AI does. You don't when you uh, start as Rune. Are they still trying to bribe us? Stop it. <laughs> Bro. No more bribery, okay? <laughs> Stop bribing us. It would be nice if there was a way that you could, like, get inside the city when someone's sieging you, if you were, like, in a connected fort, that sort of thing. Because it is a bit risky having all those troops out there in the fort of Strondost. Let's come and have a look down here. There's Mataram. Um, so let's come up here and let's check that they're not, you know, expanding to the east too quickly. Now, who do we want to lose this time? I want to keep the cavalry because they're so powerful. The Swordmasters were not very good last time, were they? You know, the Avari Warriors and the Spearmen are, are fantastic units. And the Thord Guard will be great in defense. Although their attack is three, that Spear Wall won't be great. So what I'm going to do... Ah, oh, no. I'll, I'll remove one Spear... Uh, one, one Thorn Guard. And that really should be enough now. Seven units versus none. Mission fail. Oh, yeah. we The Orcs of Gundabad. Forgot about you, my friend, my diplomat up here. And I don't care about the Orcs of Gundam. I could, yeah, I could scam them some map information, though. Oh, hello, Vale. Let's trade. Let's ally. And let's sell you some map information. The greatest map information on the planet. How about a thousand? Yes. Tell me you want it. Yes, you do. Fantastic. Selling the AI map information. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a bit scammy, but I'm not doing it for, like, every single nation. Well, I am doing it for every single nation, but... Oh, well. <laughs> right. Karasant was still building that big market. Carverad, let's build the Mason's Hall in there. Um, 
San and we. I think we go for the communal farming. Let's see what that... That's creating quite a bit of cash. How about the... Well, the, no, the herbalist doesn't make any money. I thought that was a winery then, but the winery is a bit more expensive. If we go for the Great Hall, that'll allow those Avari shadows to be free. But at the minute, their upkeep's only 41, so it really doesn't matter. Um, what about the chicken farming? Is that it? It just gives an extra 40. That's not great, is it? Ah, yeah, okay, but it, it's the population growth that's good for it. I think we'll go for that one then. And, you know, we took out uh, another unit, another Thorn Guard. So let's hope the AI attacks us this time. <laughs> I really don't think it's worth assaulting that. I, I don't even think we we would win just based on the, the walls, based on the amount of troops that they have, which is a really, really large amount of troops. Um, oh, here comes Rune. Hi, Rune. Welcome to the party. We could all just dive into, into Strondos now. That'll be mean that our money is slightly less. Okay. Right then. I think we can do it with, with these units. It's all based on morale, won't it? It'll all be based on morale. So if we get rid of... I don't really want to get rid of many, anyone else, really. By your command. But I think we could do that still. Okay, we've got a few buildings done. Nice. Very nice indeed. And we're getting some nice upgrades to all our... All our leaders and our generals. Right, Karasant is definitely the next one we want to build. Trading post might be quite good. Mm. Okay, no, it, it is quite good. For the uh, for the cost, yeah, it's really good. So let's get out of there in there. And, yeah, five more turns. I really don't want to be waiting five turns for these boys. Because you can see the Easterlings are, you know, expanding. Expanding away. So I'm hoping, yeah, surely the AI is going to think that they have the upper hand here now. Five extra, five, five troops versus 12. Surely they're going to think that they are, they are going to win this. I know we've whittled them down slightly, but it'll be obscene if they don't sally out now. Surely they, they think they're good. Ah, there we are. We only needed to whittle it down to five. <laughs> so we've got less than half the amount of troops they have. Uh, you know... A lot of these troops are trash. These guys will get mopped up by our cavalry. So will these tribesmen. Uh, but the Lok Scion, Scion Rim, really nice unit. Really, really good. 10 attack, 28 defense. So we're going to have to be very wary of those and hopefully try and take them out with Norway. So let's get on to the battle map and hopefully we win, guys. So I'll see you there. Here we are. And we're going to pause quickly once again. They're the ones who've uh, chosen to sally out the towers are over here so we don't need to be too wary about being close so let's make sure we get rid of all of that and get there and we're going to do the same thing that we did last time going to get the big v formation get them there get you it doesn't need to be a, it doesn't need to be too big a v this time because, you know, we've only got one unit of Moriquendi Sentinels. So you guys get in there. And we'll have cavalry on one side. That is the one bonus we do have. We don't have... They don't have any cavalry. So we should be quite nice. Obviously, if we were assaulting the walls, having cavalry wouldn't have mattered. So it's good that we, we get this sally out battle rather than anything else. Get the Moriquendi Sentinels. Can you... You can actually fire now. Good. So get firing. By far, you need to fire into the uh, Lok Scion Rim. There we are. So, you guys, you can't do shield wall or anything. Neither can you. So, yeah, get those Lok Scion Rim. Everyone else is pretty trash. So, the Lok Scion Rim is going to be the main, main problem here. And whoever they go after will have to hold... Hold the line while we try and charge them in the back until they're dead. They also have a load of troops. Well, 111. It's, it's quite a lot. Uh, I don't know where they're going. It's not that useful. 
If they come close to my uh, Javi boys, my Javi boys firing Javis into them will be great. They've decided to just focus down this right-hand flank, which is slightly weird. Fire at the Lok Sion Rim. Quick, quick. Get your, get your Javis off, boys. Get your Javis off. That should hopefully do some damage to them. And again, I really want to kill their general early on. And then the rest of these troops, because they're so sh trash, should just, uh, you know, get into... Uh, should just waver and run away. Now, in terms of cavalry, we'll get you guys around here. We'll charge into these crossbowmen and try and stop them firing for a little bit. You guys get around the outside. Fire into the Lok Sion Rim. You guys fire into these guys. I want you to get there. Get into the crossbows. Now, I'm slightly worried, you know. Don't think we're going to be in the greatest situation. But if we can come around and charge these Balkov spearmen in the back, that'll be great. Oh, good charge, good charge. So get out. Now you guys get out. We're going to have to really, really be careful with our cavalry here. Guys, come on. Get in there. You guys get in as well. There we are. Now you can fight. Problem with them. They're all being uh, spread out. God damn, they're charging me now. Get out of there. My cavalry is trash as well. That's a big problem as well. The cavalry is not good. But they, these guys are wavering already, these tribesmen, of course, because they're trash. Moriquendi Sentinels fire into there. Moriquendi Sentinels, of course, again, a really good unit. If we can get round there now and, and charge that Lok Sion Rim, that'll be great. Get into the Balkov Spearmen. Um, thinking fire at those Daratai Hunters because there's so many of them. They're all blobbed together. That should be a good charge. Oh, it was a good charge. Good. Now back out. Now you boys. Oh, that was a good charge as well. If we could get into the Scion Rim there. That'd be great. Oh, no. They're all they're all going to get stuck. So let's, uh, let's get out. Right. Now it's your turn again. Hopefully we can break some of these guys now. And then charge them down. Get in there. Kill the Balkov tribesmen. Uh, you guys go back after the Daratai crossbowmen. If we can kill that general, this whole army will collapse. Like, genuinely just collapse. So, if he gets... Yeah, if he gets into that position, for example... They have lost half their men. That should be a really, really good charge. Now into the Lok Sion Rim. Now we'll come after the Balkov Spearmen again. How many men have we lost? 23 versus 59? Wow. Wow. It wasn't the greatest charge ever, but it was okay. <laughs> These guys are getting whittled and whittled down. Good. Let's have a look. Let's go for the Light of Elbereth. Nice. That's good. If we can charge... He's on the left. The general should be on the left there as well. That's the main thing. So if we can charge him and kill him... Where is he? I don't see him. Get out. Get into the Balkov Spear tribesmen again. They keep firing their Javis, which is really annoying. But get out. Get out. And now the Moriquendis, they can fire at the Lok Sion Rim. Yes! Come on! This this will be so useful now. Get into there. You guys get those guys. Everyone chase after the broken boys. Now get them. Now we just need to route everyone, which is going to be hard, but it's it's fine. Oof. Come on, boys. Let's go. You fight the Luke Sion Rim. They're shaken. Uh, you guys need to get out. Get out, boys. Apart from you, you can get out. Uh, they're all shaken. They're running back through the gate, which is never great. Oh, that's, so, that's some of them that are broken. We need to try and break everyone quickly before they get back into the, uh, you know, into the city. So let's get them before they get to the town square, really. Uh, now out, boys. We'll go for another charge. Where's the town square? It's up there. No one's quite there yet. So we've got a little bit of time still. 
Get back into the Dorothy Hunters. Okay, we broke the Scion Rim, so get in there now. Come on, boys. Come on. <laughs> those guys are, those guys are going to get there, aren't they, before everyone routes. Come on, boys. Quick. Behold. There we are. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, I'm glad we waited for that because imagine assaulting that city. I know it's Elven, but, you know, the towers would have been brutal. We would have been absolutely shredded. Whereas this time, we only lost 195 men and everyone did fantastic. Thorn Riders, really good. 255. Ravanian Riders, really good for the amount of troops that they had as well. Uh, Spearmen, Warriors, look at that. 258. That is crazy. And 268 for the Moriquendi Sentinels as well. Nice. Well done, boys. I will see you back on the campaign map. Here we are, guys. Um, and I don't think sacking it will be a good idea. I think we're just going to occupy again. Um, and again, we could do with a, a, a rubbish unit down here to... Uh, to do it right, the Avari return. A messenger has come. An Avarin messenger has come to the court from the northeast. Vine regent, gathered lords and ladies, honored friends all. The Avarin triumvirate has been informed that the great banners of Dorwinian fly high above our towers and domes in the forest of Winden. It is true. Has Mornethel finally been freed? The Vine regent replied, It is true. The battalions of the Thorn have fought hard and well, and the city has been liberated. Not only that, we would now offer it back to you, freely given, in payment for what your people, the Remnant, have done to help Darwinian flourish. It is the least we can do. We would see the Avari return to this land in a glorious homecoming. The messenger wavered. Overcome with emotion, he gathered himself. My lord, you do us the greatest of honours. We surely cannot repay such a magnanimous gift. My people will readily accept this offer and we will return to Darwinian. I speak for the triumvirate when I say we will repay this gift tenfold. Our people are hardy and strong and able to see as you see fit, Vine Regent. You must now decide how the Avari will serve the Dor serve Darwinian. Do you want them to take up arms and provide battalions of elite elven forces? Yes. Uh, made up of excellent archers and defenders, albeit few in numbers. Alternatively, the elves can be put to work for the economic benefit of Darwinian. So, click the tick to gain access to slower trained and few but elite Avari troops. Click the cross to gain access to faster trained and more numerous but mid-tier human troops. Of course, we are going to accept the elven troops. We're going to click the tick. And we are going to accept the elves. The decision has been made. The Avari will take up arms and fight in the name of Darwinian. The smithies of the Avari will set to work, teaching all they can to the Northmen. Improve the armor of all our forces, be they elf or man. The Avarian War Council will reorganize the Avari Home Guard into cohorts of skillful warriors to serve the Vitna Court. The Order of Shadows, the Avari's secretive scouting force, has also stepped forth and pledged their support. The Easterlings shall be forced to accept peace when they see the might of the Golden Hordes of Dorwinian. Very nice. Very, very, very nice indeed. Avalyn. So we've got Avalyn as well now. Uh, where does he Where does he come in? Here he is. Yes, Avalyn. Very nice. And he has Avari Naharim, which is a, uh, you know, missile uh, cavalry unit. And that is a such a strong general to have so i think we're going to send him to mornathel as well but let's first of all have a look at mornathel it is already northman quite a bit so we're going to go for the standing stone straight away and who are we going to leave behind here probably one of the crossbowmen crossbowmen are trash aren't they although we could leave behind the rovanian riders but no this cavalry is too powerful to do that so let's get out of mornathel let's leave crossbowmen Get the crossbowman in there, and then you can go into Mornithel. How? Yeah, 80%. That's fine. We'll all move into here for now. Apart from Norway, who's going to come down to here and set up a watchtower just to make sure we can see any enemies coming. So, yeah, we'll see whether they can come or not. But that is very nice indeed. I'm so glad we've managed to get that. We'll uh, build... We can build in a lot of places now. We've, we've got a, quite a lot of money. So let's go for the Mason's Hall in Alarnin. Santan Wee is building Karasant. Strondos now. Strondos. I think probably the Leather Tanner will be good. Um, so let's go for that. 
I mean, these are these armies are not good. <laughs> They're really not not worth it. So, and let's bring Avalyn across here because he's a fantastic general, and he's of course cavalry, so he'd be a very fast general as well. So you can come down there, Avalyn. Now, where do we go from here? That is the the, the question. I think we come across this way. So where's our spy? I want you to scout ahead. So get up that way. I can't remember exactly where these settlements are. But they're all kind of in the middle of their regions, really. Um, so just going for the middle of the region will be the, the best option. But I'm so glad we have finally taken Mornithel. We are building everywhere now. So we've got enough cash to keep on expanding, which is really nice. Um, and now, what is the building? We have the access to this Avari Academy. Here it is. Morale bonus to troops, plus three. And recruitment slots allowed, plus four, which is really nice. So let's have a look at our building browser and go for the Avari Academy. And then the Sword Singers is morale bonus plus six. And recruitment slots allowed six. That's just crazy. Um, I've also got this Avarin uh, Weaponsmith Guild and Avarin Smith's Guild, which is uh, upgrades me uh, melee weapons and morale bonus again, which is a global effect on that second one, uh, which is really nice. But here, if we build the Avari Barracks, you can see we can start recruiting some of these new troops. And we've already seen them. The Avari Shadows, the Avari Spearmen, and the Avari Warriors, and then the Avari Nah Naharim as well, which is the one that Avalyn has. Uh... Not 7 and 17, which is pretty nice. Uh, but then let's have a look at a few of our other... So we go to the Regent's Armory. Then, you know, in terms of the Thorn uh, the thorn Guards, you can get the Darwinian Infantry, Darwinian Swordmasters, and the Athala Rangers over here as well. Although I thought that was just a human choice. But here we go. We can get the Regent Axe Guard, as you can see. The Regent Spear Guard. The Vitna Court Knights. And the Vitna Court Paladins. So, I believe this one is if we've chosen the human choice. But let's go back to the barracks. So, if we go here. And then you can see. So, that's what if we what we get if we go for the human choice. But if we go for the Avari choice, we can also get the Avari Armory as well. Which allows us to get Moriquendi Protectors. Moriquendi Sentinels. Uh, and that's it. So, very nice indeed. I really do like that. And I'm so glad we went for the Elven choice. In terms of anything else, we've got these way stations. They don't provide anything, I don't think. And then the wineries also don't. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, the garrisons not make a difference. And then the hero shrine also doesn't make a difference. So yeah, I think we're, we've, we're in a pretty good situation now. Uh, yeah, none of, none of the rest of these do anything. Not the blacksmith. No, the Avari armory, though, we can get, which is nice. Uh, we can also get the catapult make maker, but we don't need that right now. But fantastic. And I'm hoping, you know, we can build that in Santamui uh, very soon. And the, the earlier we get it, the quicker we can then start recruiting the uh, elven troops. So we might, in fact, I might, in fact, just skip that ahead there. I know it's... Yes. You know, not so efficient, but that'll allow us to get the Elven troops a lot quicker. And then when it's built in Karasant and Strondost, we'll build it as well. Actually, in fact, we could have probably built that in Strondost right away, could we? No, we needed the Thorn Armory first. So that's fine. We'll keep on building that instead. Right. Well, that is a great situation. So let's press the end turn. Mornothel is taken. Um... And we can see, you know, we can see what's what's happening around Mornithel now as well, which is good. And, uh, oh, there we go. The rune has attacked us. So I guess we're not going to scramble towards Mirkwood anymore. We're going to go straight after rune. Um, and they've just gone after Strondost, which is very weird. I don't know why. <laughs> what we might do is just move Alvalin down there. Or Avalid. I, I can't remember his exact name. Ah, yes, store. Very nice. We'll take you. Where are you? We want you to come over to Carverad, and I want you to build some watchtowers all around this region. We've got a new mission. Go and meet the Orcs of Gundabad. Oh, hello. They're there. So let's go for trade rights. Let's sell them map information. Yep, something else. A thousand. Okay, looks like they've accepted. Good. And what did we get for that? 
750 gold. Nice. That's definitely welcome. Thank you, council. So now it's time to go after... Uh, after Rune, because they've declared war on us. The one thing I'm worried about is if I come down here and take Burg Emerikis, you know, th splitting them in half, that would be quite good, though, if we did that. So... I guess let's go for it. So we'll come forward. Uh, you're going that way. Now, Alva... Uh, sorry, what's his name? Avelyn. Avelyn, there we are. Let's come here. What do you have? Oh, he's got Farun Mercenaries. They're a really good unit. And we've got Lok Khan Rukar, the faction leader, with his Lok Rim bodyguard. Um, let's just leave that for now. We'll get a couple of reinforcements in there. <laughs> Firstly, Athel here. And then we'll also get some Thorn Guard, just to hold them. And then that should definitely be enough to beat them. So let's fight it, and I'll see you on the battle map, guys. So here we are, guys. And um, we're going to be able to see how the uh, Avari Naharim do in a battle, because they should do really, really well. We've also got the Athala Rangers, the first time we've seen them. Have a look at these boys, very nice. Human Ranger Ranger units, and also the first time we've probably seen the Thorn Guard as well. And they will get shredded by, um, you know, the troops that we're going to fight. But that's fine. These guys can fire already. So let's come forward and let's go after the Lok Rim Bodyguard. Should be able to fire quite nicely into the Farun Mercenaries there. Have you fired yet, guys? Yeah, they have. Nice. If you could reach the Lok Rim Bodyguard, that would be ideal. That's okay. And then the Thorn Guard that are coming from over there. Just march along. We don't need you to rush too much. What I'm thinking is if we just come forward slightly, we'll have a better firing arc. And fire at the Lok Rim Bodyguard. Fire at them. We don't actually have a lot of uh, ammunition with these guys. How many arrows do they have? 30. How many do you have? 32. Although you must be firing a bit quicker then. Probably quite a quick rate of fire. But there we are. Come forward and then you can fire at them. And we'll get the Ivari Naharin behind them. So they'll be sandwiched between arrows from one side or the other and they won't really know which way to face. And that'll really help us. Although they don't have a shield. So that's fine. If we come around the other side though, we can actually get a lot more power down on the general which is their faction leader, of course, which is great for us. So come around this side and keep firing. The Farun mercenaries can't be, uh, you know, uh, understated as well. They are a very, good, very, very good unit. Uh, and I'll keep on holding on to them in case they start moving. Oh, we're doing some really good damage there. Very nice indeed. And once these guys are done, they're not too bad in melee either. They're not shabby in melee, so... You know, and I think what we'll do, now they've down to uh, to 29, I don't think we need to really worry about them too much. We'll use the rest of the Athala Rangers' power, uh, firepower to fire into them. I know we're firing into them in the front, which isn't great, but it's okay. And uh, what we'll do is we'll march these guys forward, and we can, uh, you know, hopefully surround them. And although they are very good units... We've done a lot of damage to them now. And with cavalry charges, that'll be great. Watch me kill Avelyn <laughs> straight away. Now, how annoying would that be? That would be quite annoying, but oh well. We'll see what happens. We might get... I, I don't think we get another elven bodyguard, but it would be good if we did, wouldn't it? It'd be quite cool. Right then. Let's come forward. In case you're wondering why the, uh, the music might be a little different from your guys' music, it's because I've got it on... Um, I've got it on the non-copyright music, so you guys, you know, so I don't get copyright strikes on the videos. You know, the Lord of the Rings music's quite copyrighted, so <laughs> it's not got the Lord of the Rings music, but it's fine. I, I don't mind. It, it, it's still great. And the Medieval 2 soundtrack is fantastic. And there's some lovely little tracks added in to on top of the Medieval 2 soundtrack as well. Right. Let's come forward. You guys get in here. Uh, you guys get around there. Run if you can. You can't run. So run. So these guys, you know, ideally want you up there. Get you running. 
This is killing. I can't believe sometimes the AI is so dumb. <laughs> Get in there. The, see, the Thorn Guardsmen, like, the, they don't have, they're not very good, but, you know, the shield wall, the spear wall is always good. So we are fighting two units with shield walls, uh, spear walls right now. So it would be nice if you got in formation, boys, and then I could charge. So get in guard mode. And now we go for the charge. That was actually quite a good charge for a uh, non, you know, for a unit that uh, isn't in regular formation. The one thing we've got to be really careful of is killing uh, Avalyn. Which I really don't want to happen. You can see the power of this Thorn Guard. Like, with that Spear Wall, it's just shredding these Far Rune Mercenaries. They, I think they've come out of Spear Wall. What we're going to do then is try and charge them. Go and fight them. So you guys get in there, and hopefully we can break these guys. Didn't really do much, that charge, did it? The one thing is, you can see Avalyn quite easily, because he's all in gold. Now the bodyguard is just surrounded. Get you off guard mode now, but keep in the spear wall. And now we'll just uh, grind it out. Once these guys are done, we'll surround the Far Rune mercenaries and get rid of them as well. So there he is. There he is. Lok Rukar. He's going to die. And he's dead. Fantastic. Oh, no, he's not. There he is. Getting shredded. There he is. The dragon. Kill him. And that's the Far Rune Mercenaries running, I think. Once he's dead, we'll be good. You guys go after them. There we are. Fantastic. And we have killed the Runic Faction Leader. <laughs> Very nice, indeed. I don't think we need to charge them down. They only got seven left. Lok Khan Ruka. Very, very nice. Nice. We killed the faction leader. Good. I love that. And we only lost some Thorn, Thorn Guardsmen, which are trash. So <laughs> that's not a problem whatsoever. So I'll see you back on the campaign map. Here we are, guys. And of course, we're going to execute. We are not going to accept those, uh, <laughs> those guys at all. We are going to execute them. Very nice. Right then. So, no way. We got a load of cash from that. Jesus. Or was that just the cash we had before? I think we got loads of cash from that. Didn't think we had this much cash. But anyway, you guys, if you can, just get back in there for now. Uh, and then, next turn, what we'll do is we will march forward. We'll take Athel here and Avelyn. And then we'll take... We probably will take fourth win as well. I know it's a bit general stacking, but fourth win's general's not really a great general. Just Regent Spear Guard. Um, you, Store, you're going to keep going to Carverad and look around. Make sure that we don't get assaulted from the west. Oh, I'm slightly worried Dale's going to just, you know, hoover up all this land up here. But I'm not too bothered. I do want this settlement, though, so that we, you know, I don't think they're going to come all the way down this way. Probably just going to take these northern ones. What we kind of really want to hope for is that Dolgador does really well. And beats Dale. So then we can go and take that land. But I'm not sure that's going to happen. We might have to declare war on Dale at some point. <laughs> um, right, before we go to Lest. We've not got the greatest of armies here, have we? So, is there anyone we want to recruit? Probably some Thorn Riders up this way. Thorn Guard are quite good. I do did like them there. They did do quite, quite well in that battle then. Anyone at Karasant? Not really. Uh, obviously, we can't recruit at, uh, over there. So let's go for that, and then let's go for two of you guys. And you guys can go down and join this army. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's end the turn. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we don't get assaulted by a massive army from nearby. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. Um, but it's going quite well already, isn't it? Quite nicely. I, I just don't want Dale to take all our, our land, because that's our land, bro. Why have they skipped past us there? <laughs> weird AI. Very weird. And that is that that's just a captain as well, not a general. I don't know why. Why would they do that? That's just so weird. Uh, so Bride presented. What are you? You're just Dar Daratai warriors. So, you know, you can try and go and siege down that. But it's, you know, you're not going to do anything. 
So let's go for Burr Americus. Uh, recruitment report. Thing is, the one problem is we don't want to lose Mornithel because it is, if we do, I believe the elves will leave us. So, yeah, really, you know, losing Mornithel would not be good for us. But let's go for Lest. That's a very rich city. You know, it's already got a port. It's already got everything inside it that we want. Yes. So let's go for these guys. Let's get them on the bridge. Uh, and let's organize them properly. Uh, we'll take... Fourth win as well. Take you. Uh, and you can go in Strondost. Keep it happy. And let's uh, go down to Lest. And we probably will assault that if we want to. Sardoon over here. What does he have? Local in bodyguard. 15 and 22. It's quite good. Um, I'm not bothered about you though. I'm going to leave you for now. Gonna bring these two Thorn Bladesmen down this way. Uh, and then money-wise, uh, I'm gonna save it so that we can build. Oh, we are losing money now, of course. Uh, uh, yeah. So let's have a look up here. So because we're losing money, I do want to spend that money. So... Probably go for... Are we already... Yeah, we've already got free upkeep on these guys. So we don't need that. Let's go for the Standing Stones. And then Strondos. Let's go for the Leather Tanner. Um, and yeah, we'll attack her. Lest. And then we'll probably just go straight for Mistrand. Uh, and then come around this side. If we can meet up with Norway over this side. Norway can go Burr Americus. This town, what it's called. Eman Hath. Uh, and then this one as well. Uh, Mataram. And that will have cut them all off here. It'll just be this side. And then it'll be the ones over there. So we're going quite quick. So that slower, slower start really did help us out. You know, we didn't need to absolutely rush and boss through at the start. We could, uh, you know, chill out and be a bit slower. Which is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, Easterlings of Rune. Here they come. Trying to bribe Strondos still. <laughs> Keep trying, guys. Keep trying. And they haven't actually attacked us at Lest, so that's going to be a nice, easy battle uh, to do. Very nice indeed. They probably won't even put anyone on the walls, so we'll just have to kill them inside of the city. Which will be fine. Be good. Take settlement. But Americus. Yeah, that's what we're going for. What was the reward for that, though? Oh, and it's only got wooden walls. Fantastic. Uh, one of the best units currently available. Okay, great. I'll uh, I'll take you up on that offer. Now, I re would really like to start getting those uh, elven troops out if we can. Uh, we got thorn riders as well. Uh, where were you, thorn riders? You're up here, aren't you? So you guys come down this way. You guys come down here. And I think it is right to focus on rune now rather than going after these rebel settlements. If Dolgador takes them, that's great. We can then go and take them off Dolgador. So we'll come across this way. Burr Salfis is over here somewhere. But then we'll have a look north and see how Dale's been doing. They did just send an army across this way. So there's a chance they've taken Rawberg, which... Ah, uh, it's a bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Let's put it that way. So you guys, you guys are still coming down this way. That's fine. Right, let's, uh, let's assault Lest. And let's have a bit of fun, shall we? So, Sadun. Yeah. Let's, uh... I'll play this battle, guys. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably just cut it out because it's such a small battle. Uh, there's no need for you guys to see it. Lest isn't a uh, custom settlement, I don't believe either. So, I don't think, you know, you'll want to see it. Uh, if it is a custom settlement, I'll put it in. But if it's not, I will see you at the other side of the battle, guys. Here we are, guys. So we did win quite handily. Uh, you know, you see the Thorn Guard there. They went up against it. Was uh, this unit went up against the uh, the Loke uh, the Loke uh, the Loke Rim Bodyguard, who were quite strong, um, and they did yeah quite a bit of damage. But we used our tried to use our generals uh, archers as much as possible to do as much damage as possible, and then surrounded uh, the rest of the army. But 
you know, we did more damage than them, so that's good in a siege battle. So I'll see you back on the campaign map, guys. There we are. Lest is ours, which is fantastic. Another port in our hands, so that should be a lot more money as well. Now, it's going to be interesting what we do with this settlement. Uh, and I don't want to sack it just in case it destroys the port or the merchant's wharf. So we are going to just occupy it. Uh, and we're going to delete, you know, these buildings. This practice range, we don't need that. We have dirt paths, which is fine. Uh, brothel? Is that something that's upgradable for us? I'm not sure. Uh, but that's fine. And let's then get us the meeting hall. Get that down to low. And let's see whether... You know, we can hold it just with these boys. Yes. And let's move out. 45%. Not quite. We could probably do with a general in there, really. Um, and then next turn, let's have a look at what... Yeah, we are starting to make money again now. You can see those siege route, uh, Siege? Those uh, trade routes that have come in. That's very nice uh, indeed. Um, that is going to be the problem going forward, is, is finding units to fit into these armies. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, we'll leave them in there for now. Store, you are going for Carvad. If we get another general, we're going to send him straight down south. Um, you know, to, to take this city. So we're going to have to just wait a couple of turns to make sure that Lester's happy. I mean, I could leave another couple of units in there, but yeah, we might do that rather than waiting around because I really do want to go and just take Mistran straight away. Um, and look at all those uh, trade routes that are coming now. They're fantastic. This is the power of the Sea of Rune. It, it's so powerful. You become so rich so quickly. Um, and it's really, really good for money. Um, we can, in fact, you know, we can train units up at Karasant. Send them down here as well. Some, some levies. So that we've got enough people holding the cities. The clans of Rune have taken note of our recent conquest. Even now, riders are speeding eastwards, informing the various Khans and warlords of our victory and the defeat of their allies. None of them shall receive this news joyously. May many will begin mustering their warriors, pre preparing to march west. It may be wise, my lord, to hold position here and allow the passage of time to blunt the edges of the Easterling's anger. Pushing our conquest further may have unintended consequences. Okay. Well, that is an ominous, ominous message, isn't it? Um, that is very ominous, but, you know, oh well. <laughs> I think uh, with store, we're going to go and, you know, set up some watchtowers over here. So we can actually see it's still not owned by Dale yet over this way, which is good for us. Really good. Uh, there comes Khan Uldor. And that is a very, very, very big army. So we're going to keep an eye on him. Definitely, because if he gets up here, you know, we've got no defenses up this region to defend against him. I think he'll be a bit slower uh, than usual. What we're also going to do, we're probably going to just auto-resolve this rather than me fight it. I don't think I could have done less than 42 casualties there because of the uh, the towers. So again, we're going to just accept that. We're going to get rid... The trading post is definitely something we can, uh, we can build. So we'll keep all those in there. Can we repair that? Do we need to repair anything in Lest? No, we actually don't, which is great. Um, but yeah, that isn't, uh, you know, taking it easy on them. But we've uh, got a uh, unit of Dorwinian Swordmasters up here. What we'll do with the rest of our money is at Strondost, we'll recruit those two so they can act as garrison and then we'll go after uh, Mistrand over here in the east. We'll bring those Swordmasters down as well. An extra unit is never something... To sniff at, so we'll go for that. This is quite a large army, and Faroon mercenaries and stuff is quite a decent army as well. So we're going to have to be careful. We are starting to make some good, decent money now, though. Let's get that building in there as well, and let's end the turn. Very nice. Well, we've taken less, which is great. The problem with Rune is it's just so spread out. Um, I am slightly worried about that massive army as well. That is a large, large army. I don't want them to come and uh, take uh, take us from the back, <laughs> if you'll allow me to say that. But uh, yeah, I don't want them to come around um, the backside that isn't really defended um, and defeat us there. So, right, Knut, let's take him. Nut, Mr. Nut. 
Um, yeah, Mr. Nut, you can kind of stay there. We'll probably send you to Elanin. The one good thing we have here, though, is the fact... Oh, Storm might, not, might get killed. Have we built that yet? Yes, we have. Fantastic. Okay, why can we not? Oh, I built the Avari Academy and not the, uh, not the barracks. Oh, well, that was a bit of a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> Although, do we need, yeah, I think we need the Great Hall next. So, let's start on that line on either Strondost or Karasant when we can. Uh, so, we'll save up our money for a second. Go for the construction. Yeah, we got the academy and not the, the barrack line, which is... Ah, oh, oh, just dumb. <laughs> just really dumb. Um, but here's the question. Do we just carry on going? I think we get the meeting hall here. I could do with another spy. Oh, it won't allow us to recruit another spy. Can we recruit spy here? Maybe Karasant? Yeah, let's recruit another spy. These guys will get you down to there. And then everyone else. Yes, we can actually leave now. Go after you. So that's another one. Yeah, we'll just... Uh, these tiny little battles, there's no point us fighting them. So, and we'll go straight for Mistrand. You can see Mistrand is quite well protected. So we've got to be careful. If they have a big army around this region now... You know, we're a bit screwed, aren't we? So we've just got to be a bit careful. Um, not that I'm being careful right now. We'll bring the ship around this way. And we'll drop him off next turn, very likely. Um, yeah. So I think we stay in Bert Amarikis for a turn or two. Um, and yeah, these guys can now start coming down. They can join. Uh, but I am worried about this army. We might have to then go from Bur Amarikis this way. Across here. Then go north and try and take out this army. Because look at the amount of Faroon mercenaries they have. They're a very good unit, that. Very, very good unit. So let's press the end turn and let's see what happens. I'm glad we are making money now, though. That's always, always fantastic. And I'm glad Dale hasn't taken, you know, Rawberg and all those settlements yet. If Dolgador does, that's fine. Uh, but we're making a little bit of cash now. Enough to run two armies anyway, which is always good. Um, we're maybe not being as, as efficient as we can do, but Mistrand, once we've taken Mistrand, you know, we'll be in a really good situation. They are very, you know, they have a huge garrison there. Um, but, you know, if they sally out, we'll be good. And I think if they don't, we will just wait uh, to siege it down. We aren't going to be, you know... We aren't going to be assaulting it, so that's the main thing. So, yeah, again, money's gone down a little bit because we've taken our armies out. And I think, you know, judging them, they'll probably come out and attack us here because they have a pretty darn good army. These uh, Dragon Riders are really, really good on the charge. This guy, a low grim bodyguard again. The rest of the warriors, you know, the Daratai warriors are, are not amazing. But again... Uh, you know, the Dragon Guard are quite good as well. Effective against armor, which is always, you know, super strong. Yes, um, so we'll have to rely on our generals quite a bit once again. But that's no problem. Uh, the Thorn Boys will be forever uh, in, our, in our thoughts. This guy going up north. Ah, this is going to be a bit tough because, yeah, we're going to have to go after Viltur now, aren't we? 100%. There's no questions asked now about that. We will have to go after Vilter. You, my friend, can go up to Alarn in now. And what we'll do, we'll bring you down now that we've we've got a general in Alarn in. Um, the Thorn Guard are really the best people that we have in defense right now. They're really good, and we don't have much money because we've got uh, armies out of forts, but they have to be right now. And I think it's better being aggressive. I know it said, I know it warned us against being aggressive. Uh, but yeah, we got some new family members as well. Great, fantastic. I wonder whether, like, if we get family members 
from these guys, uh, they will... Um, sorry, what do you call it? Uh, they will have elven bodyguards as well. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? That would be really good. Right. Uh, our diplomat as well. We could actually, we should go after yes. Dolgador and go and talk to Dolgador and try and get a, at least in a trade agreement. If only so let's come around this way. Impossible. If only uh, because we might be bordering them at impossible. some point. And once we are, we can get some nice little trade agreements going. You, Spire, going down this way. Other spy, you're up here, aren't you? Following the army in Vilter. If they move, we're just going to have to move straight away out of here. And we might leave Captain Bard there and just move out and leave behind, you know, someone weak. Probably one of this Thorn Guard. Because although if they siege it down, which they could do, I'm not too bothered about that if they do. Um, if they do siege it down, then the Thorn Guard will do the most damage. Uh, to them for the, you know, the longest period of time. So let's end the turn. And let's keep on going. That Viltor army does does scare us quite a bit though. Look at it. it. It's pretty big. Same as the army in Mistrand. But we'll see what they do this turn. They're still trying to bribe Strandos. I thought this might happen. Luckily we have cavalry. So we should be able to win. Depending on whether they've got cavalry or not. We've got half the men they do. The cavalry is going to be, you know, absolutely as useful as it can be here. This is really going to rely on the cavalry. So let's see whether we can beat this army. And I will see you on the battle map, guys. Here we are, guys. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be tough. They have come and attacked us. So what we can do is we can take the hill and then come around and attack them. I think charging down the hill, of course, gives you a bit of an advantage. So... We can shield wall as well, which is always fantastic. So let's do that. We'll keep our cavalry behind just for now. And let's see what they do. Come on, boys. Come at us. I, I, I am, you know, I'm hopeful. If we destroy their, if we kill their general, which is this guy in the back here, if we have a look. There he is. Captain uh, Rudin. I don't know, just making, <laughs> trying to make up a rude, um, you know, a, a rude name. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what happens. We are getting, they are getting a bit restless in that siege wall. Look at them. They're ready to fight. We are going to take a lot of javis. That's one problem. And they will fall quite quickly to the javis. Luckily, our cavalry. Uh, do we go for the charge there? I think we do. Try not to take many javi hits. So get going, boys. They've managed to get two volleys off, but it's not done too much damage. <laughs> get into guard mode. There we are. Now, that's good. Right, let's come round. What are these guys? They're the Balkos Spearmen. They're kind of in the way of us charging them in the back, which is never great. Our poor guy, they're fresh at the minute, but they probably will rout if they keep on taking this amount of punishment. Um, so... Ideally, you know, if we don't win, we just want to take out as many people as we can. And we're going to do that with our cavalry, aren't we? These guys just need to hold the line, though. As soon as they're gone, we're gone. So we need to, uh, you know, try and get them to hold the line as long as possible and get good charges into the back here. Which you can see, that's quite a decent charge there. Let's come back. These guys are now taking quite a bit of damage from the Balkov Spearmen. Get out. Come on, guys. Get out. We need to try and outmaneuver that Balkov Spearman, which we can do, but our, our riders are so slow. Look at them. They are not Rohirrim or anything like that. They are a pretty trash cavalry unit, in all honesty. So, you know, charging into the enemy is, is really hard to outmaneuver these boys. Oh, look at them go. They're, the Thorn Bladesmen are just getting absolutely shredded here. This should be a good charge, though. Oh, oh, look at that. That was a huge charge. If we can do that one more time, we'll probably get those guys to rout. Honestly. Uh, these guys are holding a bit better than everyone else. They're already wavering. If we can kill their general, that'd be great. But 
we charge him now, he's he's just exp he's right he's exposed right there. If we could get any of our men to charge into him, there's one guy charging into him. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. <laughs> really? <laughs> we have definitely lost more than half hours. This is going to be close. So if we come over here, let's try and charge the, the Daratai clansmen on this side again. Uh, but these guys, oh, look at that. We've actually done quite well. Let's get the Daratov clansmen. Don't get hung up on these guys, please. Keep on just going through. Charge through. And this should be a really nice charge. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Yes. We've broken them. Good. Let's get out. Now. Okay. We've broken these guys as well. Let's go. Okay. It's all the cavalry. It's all about the cav, boys. It's all about the cav. And if we kill that general, everyone else is going to rout, aren't they? Oh, I love this song. This is a really good uh, good tune. Good med 2 tune. Uh, right, let's get into the Balkov Spearmen. They are, unfortunately, the general's on the left-hand side. There he is. I get through them first. I want to kill as many. I want to make sure that we destroy this army, really. So kill them. Should be able to kill quite a few of them very quickly. There we are, down to like 13. You know, we need to get it above 80. So it's 85% in case you don't know. If that's the general, that's either a captain or it's the general. I'm not quite, you know, that's, if we can kill him, these guys are all going to rout. There we are. Good. That might force them to rout with the, the morale shock of the charge as well. Right. No, not quite, but close. So let's get out, boys. Well, let's go for one more charge. And I think that'll be them. Nice. I'm glad we managed to win this. Yeah, it's a small skirmish, but it's really important in the grand scheme of things. Our thorn bladesmen are going to be ruined, but it's okay. Come on, that charge is really... It's got to waver them, surely. Got to get them out of the battle. battle seems to be in our favor. Somehow it is, yep. They've, got more, they've lost more than uh, 89%, uh, 85% now, so whenever these guys rout, we will win the battle. Uh, and we will have destroyed the whole army, so we won't need to chase them down. So let's go for the charge. It was a bit of a ragged charge, but I'm just trying to get them routing. The Balkov Spearmen are quite good units. Let's get out now, because they're fighting to the death. We don't want them fighting to the death. Speed that up. There we are. Fantastic. Look at that. What a great battle. Look at that. They all did actually really well. <laughs> Apart from one of the Bladesmen only got 123. It's probably the one that took all the damage at the start. Oh, no, this one is. But well done, guys. A good battle. I'll see you back on the campaign map. Here we are, guys. And, of course, we're going to execute them as well. Okay. This might be, you know, a bridge too far. Um, yeah. Oh, no, they've started to get some of their good... Well, uh, are these the Baroon Hunters? I don't think these guys are great. Long-range missiles, though, 170 meters. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to do a um, a fast, uh, a long retreat, guys. What that means is I'm not going to press withdraw here. I'm going to go into the battle and then retreat instantly. And that should hopefully be a long retreat, and that'll take us all the way up to here, for example. Um, I'm not going to show it on camera, of course, because there's no point. So I'll just see you after the retreat and see where we're retreating to. Here we are. And they retreated all the way to Bur Americus, which is fantastic. That is 100% something that we wanted to happen. That is really good. And Rune is kind of, you know, reeling right now from our power. Um, we are still in a kind of precarious situation, though. They do have a lot of troops still available. Of course, we lost our baggage, baggage train. Okay, Mistrand besiege. Hard times await the tribesmen of Rune, for they are besieged in their own capital. Shall they fail? All the steps nearby will soon feel the strength of their enemies. Every lad and soldier must be ready to defend the city until their death, if need be, as it is their duty. The capital must hold at all costs, for this is one of the greatest cities of Rune. This will be a heavy loss if the men of the east fail to protect it. Oh, and you can see Viltor, the army in Viltor is coming down. So... Yeah, we're going to just follow this army. Make sure that it doesn't go after um, Mornathel. So let's come across here. Get that watchtower in place. And then we'll go back up to Carverad. Construction-wise, Berremericus, we built the uh, the meeting hall, which is fine. Now, in terms of the unit we're going to leave behind, we're going to keep the cavalry. 
And we're going to look to see whether there's any mercenaries available. Secondly, let's actually organize the army. Let's see. Is there any mercenaries? There is. Privateer cavalry. Yep. I'm sorry. That's uh, absolutely fantastic unit. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to pay for that. Who are we going to leave behind? Who is the weakest unit here? Probably this Thorn Bladesman, honestly. The Thorn Guard are actually fantastic. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to move you into there. Leave behind that one. So let's go with the Thorn Guard first. And then our second spear unit, which is these guys. Then we're going to go for the Thorn Bladesman. Uh, going to get you on low. If they rebel in here, I'm not too bothered. Uh, we could, if I do that. Yeah, and then we'll go for the Swordmasters. Then we're going to go for these guys. Then we're going to go for them. What are they on now? 55%. Yes, my lord. Not great, is it? It's not a good... They're going to be rebelling quite hard next turn. Uh, we'll leave it a turn to see whether it sorts itself out. Who else could we leave behind, though? We could leave a Thorn Guard. And then we'll take the Cavalry. What if I leave them? It's actually on 70 just with the Thorn Guard, so that's fantastic. So what we're going to do, we'll do this probably next episode, guys. We'll go and fight that army. And then we're going to come, come north and see whether we can beat this one. It'll be hard. It'll be really hard. But they don't have a general. And that's always, you know, a bit of a mistake. Over in Mistrand, we're still... We're just going to wait to try and siege them down. Hopefully, they might come and try and relieve it with a small force. Uh, and if they do that, you know, we'll be in a good situation. Um, over at Karasant. Yeah, I think we're good leaving it on high tax rate. We want the money, don't we? You, my friend, you're going to come all the way down to Burra Marikis to try and uh, keep it. And then we're going to look for the rest of the uh, the runic cities down along here to make sure we know exactly where they are. So, guys, well, I think what we're going to do now, we're just going to toggle a fog of war. Uh, we're on, I said at turn 20, but we're on turn 25 already. Um, and I'm going to try... Not to look at rune. So we're going to toggle the fog of war and we're not going to look at rune. We're going to look at everyone else. So it doesn't give us any advantage knowing where rune are and everything like that. Um, we'll see the, see where they are on the map. But it, it, we know where their settlements are anyway. Um, so that's fine. We're not going to look at rune, remember? Now Dale, uh, in terms of their expansion, they've come all the way down here. They're going after Condovan, which... I know if they take Condovan, that's fine. I just don't want them to take Wintirian Yar. Uh, oh, I was looking at Rune. Shouldn't do that. Um, and then, uh, so they've been doing okay. The Dwarves up here in Erebor, they've not done anything. They're just sitting there. In terms of their Woodland Realm, no, they're going all right. Uh, Dolgador isn't doing great. They've taken Burr Alga, but they've... Uh, yeah, they've not taken any of the lands out here. Although they are going for it with uh, both of their... Uh, Nazgul, Lagarin, and Aglarakor. And Dolgador itself is still, you know, in charge. And then down here, you know, Mordor. Let's have a look. Should we have a look at... Um, yeah, Mordor's really not done much. They've not even taken Kerandros or Easternos Giliath even yet. So, Mordor's not doing well. The very eggs of Kondor, Kondor already are here at Halthanor. And, uh, yeah, they're doing okay. Uh, but Dol Anroth is here, ready to fight them as well. So, well done to Dol Anroth for being across the river already and fighting. The uh, Ar Ardunayam have actually taken An Karagmir, which is terrible for Harad. Because that means Harad can't get its uh, uh, Muma kill just yet. But Harad is expanding steadily. Um, and I think this is going to be a big... Well, it's always a big fighting point over this way, isn't it? But let's have a look at the, the other side of Gondor. Look at... Baylorn has been taken by Isengard. Isengard's actually going ham. So out of all the evil factions, Isengard are probably the one doing the best. They've taken Fangorn Camp up here as well. Um, 
Yeah, I know they've not pushed against Rohan very well or very effectively, but going uh, west, they've been doing quite well. They need to take Karas if they are fighting Enidwyth, but I don't know. Enidwyth have not done anything. They've kind of been a bit useless there. Look, Dunland's actually doing quite well. They've got a uh, Koloniak up here, so they will be fighting the Dunedain up here. And the Dunedain, they've not taken uh, uh, Mengelen yet. Uh, but the Dunedain, they're doing all right, aren't they? And, you know, the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, the uh, Orcs of Moria, they, they're doing fine. They're not doing bad. They've got Fenholm off uh, the Vale of Anduin, which is fine. Uh, and, yeah, they, they're expanding a little bit. So, well done to them. The uh, Khazad Doom is under siege, but they have a full garrison there. So, good luck to the Orcs trying to take that <laughs> against Dwarven troops as well. Um, the Elves of Lothlorien, pretty standard, not really doing much. Uh, and the Orcs of Gundabad, doing okay. You know, a bit of expansion, which is quite nice. And then we see uh, Angmar up here. Uh, expanding as usual, not quite in contact Oh my god, Deadman's Dyke is, is full of troops. Wow. Not quite in contact with Deadman's Dyke or uh, Anuminas just yet. Uh, but they're just taking the rebel set territories and soon they'll be out expanding. The elves have taken Bruinost, which is a big target for the, for the goblins. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the, the good factions are kind of doing pretty well, honestly. Um, so that was just a whistle stop, uh, whistle, whistle stop talk. So nice to uh, nice to just see how the AI is doing, but and we didn't look at what uh, Rune was doing. Well, we saw you know up here that they had this settlement still, but apart from that, we didn't see what they were doing. So that's good. We didn't use it uh, for any cheap gains. But if you have enjoyed this video, guys, please do like, please do subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.